in confessions. Welcome. Take a long look at our studio audience. Go on, take a good look at their faces. Innocent, decent, warm-hearted people. Who would think that behind these facades lurk people with deep, dark secrets? People like you, Mark Baker. Who always wears two pairs of boxer shorts so that girls think you have a nice, firm bum. <laughs> or you, Erin Rooks. When a friend visiting for lunch announced she was vegetarian, you took a lettuce from your rabbit's hutch <laughs> and served it as... <laughs> or you, Ivan Evans. who as a child would stick straws into frogs' bottoms <laughs> and blow them up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, cover your ears and close your eyes. It's time for Confessions. <laughs> You lot must be here to reveal your darkest secrets. No! Okay, you lot must be here to laugh at someone else's secrets. Yeah! Right. Now, um, we'll have to see about that. We'll see about that. I need three star confessors for tonight. Sarah, hello. Hi. Do you know why you're famous? Do you know why you're really important to the show? I really don't know. Because you're sitting behind our first contestant. Yeah! yeah! It's you. <laughs> Patrick Grundy. It is Patrick, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Go on the stage, please. A round of applause for Patrick Grundy. Oh, That's a really terrible thing to happen to anybody, isn't it, Karen? It is really, yeah. <laughs> it is Karen, isn't it? It is, yeah. Karen Molino from Liverpool? Yeah. You're our second contestant on the stage, please. <laughs> Karen. Hello, David. Hello, Simon. It is David Smith, isn't it? It is, yes. You're here, you're here to unburden your soul? Am I? <laughs> yes, you are now. <laughs> David Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Follow me, oh. David. <laughs> A round of applause for our three contestants. Here we go. Okay. Well, Patrick, Karen, David, let me just say, first of all, there's no need to panic. Apart from you, David, actually, I think you could be panicking. Uh, we've, uh, we've spoken to all your mates, all your friends, all your workmates. We know everything about you. There are 180 seconds on the clock that's in front of you. The idea is to keep hold of as many of those seconds as you possibly can. I've got three big confessions that I have on you. You have to guess to the story I'm alluding to. And there is a big prize for our star confessor. The best one tonight is going to go on a little special holiday to Barbados. Okay. Oh, yes. So that's what we're playing for. Patrick Grundy, we're going to start with you, and I Thank know you. that you think we're going to talk about that stripper story, but it's OK, because <laughs> it's safe with me for the moment anyway. So, Patrick, here's your first clue. Every clue I have to give you on top of this will cost you 20 seconds off your school, OK? okay? Money for nothing is your first clue. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> um, some while ago, while I was a, a young, impoverished student, mm -hmm. we were going to the pub on a Friday night, and we decided to do things a bit cheaper. So we decided to knock on people's houses, collecting for Help a London Child, Soil Capital Radio. <laughs> um, and um, we carol sang and collected quite a bit of money, and we collect, counted it all up when we got to the... Um, uh, the telephone box. Yeah. Just before we got into the pub, and then decided that we'd 
get wrecked. <laughs> and hopefully that's it, because otherwise, if there's another one, then I'm It's not, actually. That's not the story that I'm after. <laughs> Do you know where that came from? Can you give me the clues again? <laughs> Money for nothing, I can give you another clue. It'll cost right. you 20 seconds. Um, yeah, better have another one. Okay, we take 20 off your score, you're down to 160. It was a con trick. <laughs> well, I, I can't remember ever trying to be a, a, impersonating a prisoner of war. No, 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 I haven't got a clue. No? You'd like another clue? Yeah, unfortunately. Take 20 off your score. Okay. I'm not going to have anything less, am I? <laughs> there was no insurance against this Saturday night fever. <laughs> think, think about being on a skiing holiday. Well, on, on a skiing holiday, I... I <laughs> <laughs> He's getting nervous, isn't he? He's getting nervous. Well, no, I... I... I Don't act all innocent. No. <laughs> Don't come the righteous... <laughs> well, there was one time I went skiing and I, I fell over, smashed up my shoulder, and I went to get a whole lot of treatment. And basically speaking, I was told I couldn't ski anymore. So I had all the treatment and I was told I couldn't ski for a week. But as soon as I was only there for a week, I carried on and I claimed all the money back from the insurance. Yes, Patrick, that is right. I mean, I noticed that you missed out the bit where, despite the fact that you had your arm in a sling, you went to the disco, you fancied the tour rep, you started doing your John Travolta impression, which kind of gave the fact away that you weren't that injured. But you still got the money, and you get 140 seconds. But just hang on a second, because you're probably thinking, who set me up? Where have all these stories come from? Have one guess? My wife, Dawn. Should we just start the process of getting our own back? Yes. <laughs> OK. There's Dawn. Who? as a ten-year-old, was riding her dad's lawnmower. <laughs> Unfortunately for her, she ran over the family cat and killed it. <laughs> Back 140 seconds, OK? This is Patrick. Hello, Karen. Hello. Karen Molina used to be a tax officer. I did. There's the 10 quid I owe you. Put <laughs> that in your back pocket. Okay, don't, just don't tell anybody. Okay, Karen. Yes. Here's your first clue. An embarrassing mistake. It could be anything with me. <laughs> <laughs> from the whole library you have to choose from, pick one. The most embarrassing. Oh. How about the time on holiday last year? Oh, no. <laughs> Um, when I was helping the little boy with the spaghetti. OK, so, well, 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 we started there. So you're on holiday where? Do I have to tell it? If it's not the right one. Well, we, ha haven't, oh, we haven't right. found that. So you're on holiday. On holiday in Mallorca and there right. was a buffet. Yeah. And I'll, I'll talk to anyone. <laughs> no offence. Thanks, no, <laughs> and, Great. And um, there's this little boy in front of me. All, you know, all the rest and spaghetti bolognese. Spaghetti and chips is my kind of it place. It was, it was. So I said to this little boy, do you like spaghetti bolognese? And he said, yeah, I do. And I said, yeah, well, I'll do that for you. And I, I got, like, the tongs and I, I sort of dug in like that and they were sprung-loaded and they <laughs> went all over his T-shirt. <laughs> and he burst out crying. He burst out crying? Yeah. Well, he sort of went... Uh, you know, because he was all done up for the night, you yeah. know, and he ran off towards his mum and I ran off towards my family and I was sort of, you know, kept a low profile for the rest of the holiday, really. It's not that story, Karen. Oh, no. <laughs> but it was a pleasure sharing it. Um, Would you like another clue? You can guess it. It's a mistake. Um, no, I better have another clue. OK, it would take 20 off your score. Uh, you let the innocent take the blame. What oh, me? Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> oh, I know what it is. I think we've got that. Yeah, it's when my knickers fell off. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. So, OK, so, well, let's tell this story and we'll see where we get. Well, I sort of, because I was quite lazy, and a lot of ladies probably can identify with this, <laughs> taking my trousers and everything off and all in one go. Right. Okay. Next day, clean knickers on. Yesterday's trousers. And I went to work and I was making a cup of tea for the rest of the staff. And I just felt something 
wriggled down and I looked and there's sort of yesterday's knickers on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, so embarrassed. Right. And um, there was workmen, workmen in the offices at the time and someone said, who's done that? And I would, it was the workmen, they planted them there, isn't it awful? <laughs> That's exactly the story that we wanted. Oh, well done. Well done. Well done. Seconds. The Reverend David Smith, <laughs> Anglican chaplain at Birmingham University, correct? Correct, yes. I'm just going to, excuse me, one, two, three, five, six. They've so been broken uh, on, on this list. <laughs> um, that, the Bible says, love your brother, doesn't it? Yes, it Amongst does. Amongst other things. Yes, it does. I wonder if you will be by the end of this evening, because it's your brother, Ronald, who set you up tonight. So be reassured. Here's your first oh, clue. Dear. <laughs> Can I go now? No, you can't. No, you can't. OK, here's your first clue. You were at school at the time. <laughs> was it... Was it my first um, school report? <laughs> Where it said on its divinity Hopeless. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was in the school orchestra. Anything to do with music? Well, let's hear music? the story. Well, <laughs> I've never told anybody this. <laughs> uh, I actually was one of the worst players the school's ever had. I played, played the violin. OK. And the person sitting next to me in the orchestra was a brilliant, brilliant violin. First violin, and then he left. And nobody realised that for all the years I'd been in the school orchestra playing next to this chap who was brilliant, everyone thought it was me. And so I was promoted to be leader of the school orchestra. <laughs> and I was, I'd perfected the art of miming the violin, you see. And I can remember, it, it comes back to me now, on the pri prize day in 1964, at Dudley Town Hall, that well-known place of entertainment, um, I was playing the school orchestra in front of a thousand people and I came in as leader of the school orchestra, <laughs> took a applause, bow, yeah. thunderous applause, and I actually never played a note. <laughs> you mind the sorry whole thing? That. I mimed the whole thing. It's exactly the story that we're after. Yes, oh, Reverend, God. yes, Reverend, yes! Yeah. <laughs> a man clearly from the Millie Vanilli School of uh, Entertainment <laughs> at the... Uh, <laughs> At the end of our first round, uh, we can see that Patrick is on 140, Karen is on 100, so he should be. The Reverend David Smith on 184. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to interrupt the show for a moment now because I'm hearing that Shaw Taylor has some news of a very serious case for the confession squad. Let's join him. A row of fish. Take a hard look at them. What do they tell you? They tell you nothing, because they're dead. Even if they were alive, they couldn't tell you anything, because they're fish, and fish don't speak. That much we know. But if this place were alive, and given the gift of speech, what story could it tell you? It might tell you the story of a severe fraud, a fraud in which this man was involved, Jonathan Lavelle, a former scout patrol leader. Some years ago, Jonathan took a group of young scouts to arrange an innocent fishing competition. By the end of the week, everybody had caught a fish, except, of course, Jonathan. And he was so determined to win this magnificent first prize that he enlisted the help of a local fishmonger, where he bought one of these. He then entered it for the competition, pretending he'd caught the big one. Big enough to beat the young lads in his care to that trophy. Now, they don't give badges for that sort of thing in the scouts. <laughs> that much we know. So, obviously, we're dealing with a very sophisticated criminal mind. But the good news is that the confession squad assure me that an arrest is now on the cards. OK, thank you, Shaw. Another shocking crime. The confession squad has cleverly lured Jonathan to the studio. He thinks he's setting up a friend. Little does he know he's the one being set up. Confession squad officers are about to make an arrest. Mr. Lavelle? Yeah. Mr. Jonathan Lavelle? Yes. Hello, Mr. Lavelle. How do you do? I'm uh, Detective Inspector Bunsen. Right. Now, uh, <coughs> we'd like to ask you... 
coming with us? No, sure. Uh, should we do it somewhere else? Because uh, we don't want to make a scene or anything. It's just yeah. a just a just routine. Just Yeah, okay. All right. Now, we've got our man. He's being brought in as we speak. Any second now, he's going to come through that door to be interrogated live in the studio. Let's see what happens. All right. Sit down, Lavelle. Sit down. Take a seat. You didn't expect to find yourself here, did you, Mr Lavelle? No, not really. Do you know what you're here for? No idea. I've led a very sheltered life. Have you? Yeah, done nothing wrong. <laughs> well, that's not the opinion of about 300 other people in this room. Oh, yes. And oh, like dear. us, they suspect something a bit uh, fishy about you, Mr Lavelle. <laughs> No idea what you mean. You're already skating on thin ice. <laughs> you certainly are. Nothing to say at all? Nothing. You no. just sit there and flounder, don't you? That's what you do, Mr Lavelle. <laughs> you have to speak up, Mr Lavelle. I'm a bit hard of Really? I myself have a tense, nervous haddock. <laughs> really? Oh, you you two seem a bit, you know, a bit couple of sharks to me. <laughs> well, maybe a testimony from a witness. Might jog your memory. Yeah, I still remember what he said to me. Yeah, I still remember. He went. <laughs> we'll be looking forward to seeing you because yeah. this interrogation room has been empty for a very long while and uh, we've been waiting for someone to come along and uh, fill it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you recognise this place? <laughs> feel it. No, I don't know. I've, I've caught so many of them. Oh, have you? Oh, have you? <laughs> One looks oh, that's interesting. You've actually caught quite a few of those, have you? Yeah, I have. Oh, I see. You're a very but experienced I'm fisherman. I'm quite an accomplished fisherman, if I say so myself. Right, well, let's get down to brass tacks. Does the uh, phrase dib, 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 <laughs> dob, uh, dob, dob, yeah, does that phrase mean anything to you? I, I believe that some people use it as a reference to the scout movement. Right. The scout movement. Yeah. You were at one time a wearer of the woggle. Oh, <laughs> I was indeed, and a proud wearer for many years. A proud well. wearer, in a position of responsibility, I believe. Oh, I believe I was. Yeah, I was a patrol leader. A patrol leader. No less. Before you were an accomplished catcher of fish, you were uh, procured fish by some other means. The traditional method of catching fish is, of course, to cast a line in a stream or river and wait for the fish to catch the bait and be pulled up from a little hook. Oh, I think you wouldn't find this species in a river, though. But you would find it in a sea, <laughs> although not necessarily in this condition, Mr Lavelle. It perhaps might be doing this. <laughs> Unless, of course, it was caught by your good self at the end of a weekend of competitive fishing with your younger mates in the scout movement. <laughs> Do you remember now, Mr Lavelle? Um, I see the doors open. It won't be where you're going, mate. It'll be very dark there. <laughs> so How many you... fish did you catch, Mr Lavelle? Um, Legitimately. Um, uh, none, I think. None. And yet you managed to win the competition, Mr Lavelle. <laughs> well, cough it up. Well, I believe I am... Um, on the last day of competition, I came off from mm -hmm. um, Dover Breakwater and desperate to win the competition. As I say, I got all the gear and I hadn't caught a fish and... All my younger kids have been catching little things, but more than I caught. <laughs> so, I've, well, I've got to keep face here. I've got to win. There's one that so you've missed out. Is there? The visit to the local shop. Oh, yeah. By your dad. Oh. To buy a fish. Yeah. He put it in some newspaper, gave it to you, you put it on the end of a line, dipped it in the sea, pulled it out and said, Oh, blimey, look what I've caught. <laughs> what a lucky chap I am, just in time. <laughs> Is that a fair summary of the event, sir? Um, I'd have to... You admitted it. At least you've made a full and frank confession, Mr Lavelle. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks very much. What a story. But fortunately, from now on, you can go forward from this studio with a clean slate. Thank you very much. Because here it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is your clean slate. Jonathan Lavelle, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, my name is Malcolm. A few years ago, my 
best friend, and he was my best friend, was emigrating to Australia. And he held a farewell party in his mum's house. And the champagne was really flying, and I was getting more drunk by the minute. And I just couldn't hold back any longer. I just had to be sick. So I tried to make it for the back garden, but didn't even make that. And I just threw up into this, what I thought was a container, but it turned out to be a hamster's cage. And <laughs> overnight, the hamster died. And um, nobody knows to this day. Peter, if you're listening in Australia, I'm awfully sorry. So here we go, round two, you're in last place, so you've got it all to go for I've here. Got to okay, it's up, yeah. Barbados is where we're heading, heading for. Okay, round two, here's your confession, 20 seconds each time. You were in a pub at the time of this confession. Most of my confessions end up in a pub. <laughs> Indeed, many people's do, but... And would you like another clue? But it will cost you 20 and you're not in a strong position? Well, I'd probably like another beer and then I could probably do it. Um, <laughs> I'd better have another clue, because I'm... Blank. Okay. Would you like to put your hand in the mystery bag, take out your clue, just see what's in there? I'm going to take it out. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, hold it above your head. Right. The wrong way around. I, I'm a surprised oh, a no, Chelsea fan can notice. There you go. Well, it's different. <laughs> So, I'm in the pub, and I'm wearing a Chelsea scarf. Well, Chelsea is just a clue. It doesn't necessarily have to be in a scarf. <sighs> another clue? I better have another clue. I think you better. OK, we take another 20 away from your score. Uh, your final clue, you were a real fantasy footballer. Well, I've... You're in a pub. Chelsea gear. Fantasy footballer. Oh, good God! <laughs> we were in a pub. We Are you praying down there, David? <laughs> David was praying, and we got there in the end. We weren't in a pub. We were in a wine bar, and it was a girlies' night. What are you doing out. there then? Oh, so anyway, so it was a wine bar. We were, I turned up, and I was wearing um, a Chelsea top, and um, I parked the car around the corner. So I came in, and there was this very obnoxious American who was, like, standing there. And I just came in, started talking to all these girls like I'd known them for, for years, which most of them I had, um, and was, like, freely kissing them all and all, certainly other. And this American got very cheesed off, to say the least. And yeah. so he came up to me and was going, going, hey, how'd you do it? And it's like, I'm wearing the Chelsea stuff. So I said, well, I'm a professional footballer. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I, I find it incomprehensible why anyone would want to choose to wear a Chelsea kit. When it's got nothing... To, well, there was David Mellor, of course, but, I mean, outside of that, why you would choose to wear a Chelsea top? Because I got it for one of my birthday presents. <laughs> Very nice. I can tell you're suitably embarrassed. That is exactly the story. And we got there in the end. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> nice one. You look so scared. Karen. Yes. This involved your children. It's your first clue. You're well, 160 I, I, do, I, I think I know which one it is. Oh, good. Um, straight away, it's really terrible. Um, I am a good mother now. But... Now? <laughs> no. As opposed to... Then. <laughs> um, is it something to do with their Easter eggs? Well, when they were little and... You see, we're from a very big family. Well, I'm not, but my husband is. And okay. the kid, it's not unusual for the kids to get 30 Easter eggs each. That's far too many, you know, the mm, teeth. And... Of course. Oh, it was like an act of kindness, really. What I used to do was that, I, as they came in, I used to very carefully take them out. It's easy to do. Everything. What kind of, what kind of um, yeah. Easter eggs were they? Smarties. Smarty ones, OK. Cadbury's buttons. Take, yeah. if, you, you, if you're very careful, you can untape this cardboard and lift the cardboard piece, and then you can get at the shell. Yes. And then take off the foil. If you're very careful... Yes. You can get the middles out. Yes. I just don't know that Smarties Easter eggs have Smarties inside. Because you ate one. That's yeah. just, just a terrible story. Actually, I've got a little prize for you. We didn't actually get there, but... Yeah. Oh. And I, I just think you'd really like these. I, d I love them. OK. Thank you very much. No, actually, because actually, this is what you did. 
There you go. <laughs> you got it on the first clue. You're on 160. This is Karen. <laughs> OK. David, are you ready? You're in the lead. We're going to Barbados. You and me. OK. It happened at university. It happened at clue. university. God. <laughs> Well, there's lots of things happened at university. Um, <laughs> is this the sort of show the bishop will be watching, do you think? I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> no, I hope not. Um, it depends I'd... who your bishop is, of course. <laughs> yes. It certainly won't be me in the future. Um, I think I not, need a clue. Not on these, I no. Would I you like another? Clue? I'm afraid I would, yes. It's in I... your mystery bag. Ecclesiastical purple, I hope you'll Oh, yes. There. It's rather good. Ah, it's got to be different. It's, it's a radio. When I was at university? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I was on a show called Treble Chance. You know University Challenge? Yes, That's I've on heard television. Of it, yes. Yeah. Well, there was a radio programme called Treble Chance. Is it anything to do with that? I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, yes. Um, well, this, <laughs> this was a show where <clears throat> it was members of a university team. Um, were played by a visiting team from the BBC and they came round the different universities. Okay. And uh, we had to audition for the, uh, for the show. Uh, and we did it by... Um, we had a, a multi-purpose thing, about 100 questions which we had to answer. And they said, well, well you know, you're, many of you are divinity students. We'll rely on your honesty. You can mark your own papers. Bad move. <laughs> well, no, because I got 95% and got on the show. <laughs> You? I marked... Yeah, I wrote the answers in instead of putting the ticks by the... Uh... You cheated? Yes. OK. <laughs> and you got on the radio? I got on the radio. <laughs> it's exactly the story that we're after. Oh, You confessed dear. very early. Oh. Very good story. Very good story. Oh, that's the end. OK. Oh. Oh. All right. So an interesting score situation then. Patrick is in the worst position at the moment on 100 seconds. Joint leaders, joint leaders, Karen and David on 160. <laughs> now, before we go on, before we go on, there's something I just want to say. Sausage. <laughs> Everyone loves a nice, big, juicy sausage, don't they? I know I do. And in the interest of science tonight, I want to conduct a quick survey, and I just want to look around for someone who might... I wonder if I could just squeeze in here. Could you just move up there? Thanks very much. Type it, uh, what's your name, sir? Bill. Bill Norris. Bill Norris. Oh, so this must be Sue then, your daughter. Yeah. It is. I might be wanting a word with you in just a second, Sue. Okay. Now, Bill, I'm just doing a, a sausage survey, as I said. Um, can I ask you some questions? Of course. Okay. Um, if you had to choose between, let's say, a pork and beef sausage or something more interesting like a, a, a turkey sausage, what would you go for? Pork and beef. Pork and beef. Okay. Um, if you had to choose between let's say, uh, a long, spicy, ruthlessly efficient German sausage or a fat and flabby British sausage, what would it be? <laughs> fat and flabby one. Fat and flabby British sausage, OK. <laughs> and your final question, if you had to choose between a sausage that was fresh from the fridge or one that had been half-eaten by your dog, <laughs> what, what would you choose? I'll put one out of the fridge. Yeah. Mm. That's unfortunate, Sue, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes. What happened? Well, I was cooking my dad a meal. My mum wasn't there. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> sausage, chips and peas. We had one of those flap-up tables. Yeah. And uh, I didn't push the leg under properly. <laughs> I didn't push the leg under properly and yeah. it all shot across the floor, <laughs> covered in fluff. And I had, to grab, I had to grab the sausage off my dog. And then I just put it back on the plate and covered it up. <laughs> and you never knew. Uh, Bill Sue and a sausage, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hello there, my name's Joe, and I'd like to confess that in 1978, in a large department store in Kingston upon Thames called Bentles, me and my friend Pete, what we did was we filled up a condom with fire extinguisher foam. We went all the way to the top floor, leant over the balcony, and threw it down on top of a girl that we didn't like very much. Now, I don't know whether it hit her or not, because all we did was threw the condom and then just ran away. So, if in 1978 you were walking through Bentles 
and a foam-filled condom hit you on the head, then I'm really sorry about that. Right. Now, it's that time again, round three, and you're in for a real treat because these are the biggest confessions of them all. So let's waste no more time and welcome back in last place, Patrick on 100 seconds. Come on, Patrick. There you go. You've got it all to do. You're on 100. I have. Now, the only rule change here, again, each clue is going to cost you 20 seconds, is that as soon as I finish reading out the clue, your timer is going to start counting down. You know that, OK? Right. You have to hit that buzzer, the attractive red buzzer, to guess. And you can guess as many times as you like. And you hit the red buzzer if you want another clue. Understand? OK. Wish you all the best. You were naked at the time. Not a clue. <laughs> OK. Stopped on 99 seconds. We take 20 off your score, though, OK? Because you've asked for another clue. In the wee small hours of... No, 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 no. Take you back. Iraqi war. The Gulf War. Gulf War. Okay. We're in my flat. And she woke up as I'd gone to the toilet, and she heard the door go to the toilet, but it went click, which wasn't the toilet door. It was the um, door to the front door. So I'd gone out the front door, <laughs> Apparently walked down some steps and was standing at the top of the aisle. Uh, can I move away from the thing here? No, just stay there. All right, so I was standing there, as you do. I'm glad I told totally you to stay where he was. <laughs> totally naked, like swaying from side to side. Are you sleepwalking? Yes. So Dawn came out and she was going, Patrick, Patrick, what are you doing? What are you doing? You've got to come back inside. And I was going, wee wee planes. Say what? Wee wee planes. <laughs> so, wee wee planes. Wee wee planes. <laughs> So she goes, wee wee planes? What do you mean wee wee planes? So I said, I'm bombing the Iraqis. <laughs> <laughs> With your wee <laughs> Well, it is exactly the story. Those wee wee planes is what we wanted. And you're on 79 seconds. Now we have joint leaders. With 160, let's bring on Karen first. Karen Molino. <laughs> Now, you have no idea on the scoring here because you were wearing our special confessions headphones, yes. weren't you? So you don't know how well you've got to go. But no. you're in good position from the last round in pole position. Here we go. You didn't tell the truth. Um, uh, you don't know, do you? Um, and we're counting down. Um, I so, OK, just, just think. Was it when the cat got next door's... The cat at next door's canary? <laughs> <laughs> tell us the story. When... Um, well, my next door neighbour, um, it, we don't live there now. <laughs> she, it was her best friend, George, the canary. How old was she? She was an elderly lady. Elderly lady. She was a very nice lady. Oh. And um, this is all. <laughs> One day I was in the garden and the ba our back doors were sort of adjacent. Good word, that isn't it? They were next to each other. And I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and. Susie, my cat, lovely cat, yeah. um, I saw the back door open and I thought, oh no, the bird. And I saw Susie coming out and it had yellow feathers in its mouth. And, and did your neighbour call? Or? She, she knocked later on and she said, she said, I had the door open and Georgie's gone. Can you help me look for him? And I knew it was sort of a bit of a, you know, but I pretended to look. <laughs> That's exactly the story oh, that we want to... Yeah! <laughs> very good, very good. All right. 157. OK, so it's time to bring on our other joint leader from the first round, the Reverend David. Come on, David. <laughs> you don't know how the other two have scored. You've had the headphones on. All right. Your first clue. Oh, brother... What a con. We're counting down. Oh, brother, um, what a con. OK, stopping on 158. Uh, was it anything to do with tourism? For ten years, I worked as a tour guide with a thing yeah. called Cathedral Cities Tours okay. of Cain, Pennsylvania. And it was taking American tourists, they're all clergy and their wives, on historic tours of beautiful Great Britain. Yeah. Now, I used to enjoy it, but I'm afraid 
<laughs> oh dear. And this was ten years. I made up all the legends. <laughs> 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 For instance, if, if any of... There's a, in Lancaster, there's a beautiful Victorian monument you can see from the motorway, and every single year someone will say, Hey, Father, what's that? And every single year I say, Oh, that's where the Queen keeps her bees. <laughs> The Queen's I mean, bees. The Queen's bees. Does the yes. Queen keep bees? I've no idea. Oh, it's all right. made up. And then I, I took um, uh, in Appleby, and every year the, the person who I thought would give me the biggest tip, I always used to tell them that they were going to sleep in the room where Charles and Diana had their honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> Long ago, um, and I made up the legends for for over ten years, and nobody ever rumbled it. <laughs> well. I have to tell you, you stopped on 158 seconds, and that's exactly the story we were after. Yeah. The Reverend Mavis on 158. So, well, nail-biting stuff. Let's look at the scores. Patrick, no hoper, 79 seconds. Karen, on 157 seconds. And the winner, with a magnificent 158 seconds by one second, is the Reverend David Smith. Yeah! Yes, but never mind Patrick and never mind Karen. You don't go away empty-handed from this show. Oh, no. You take away with you one of these absolutely drop-dead gorgeous little devils. But for you, David, our winner, you get the top prize, not just of a cleansed soul, which, of course, you had anyway, but you get a fortnight in Barbados and one of these completely fantastic Golden Mayo Halo Awards in 100% Perspex. Have you ever been to Barbados before? No. I wouldn't take your brother Ron, by the way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our winner, the Reverend David Smith. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's all we've got time for. No one else will have to confess, apart from you, Anne Grundy, who at the age of 60, streaked naked across Mitcham Common. That's all for now. <laughs> be good, and if you can't be good, let us know first. Good night. Those were the last confessions of the present series wanted to confess or someone you'd like to set up then write to this address confessions p.o box 2062 london w1a 1hw it's the national lottery live next on bbc one Commitment to animal welfare. I won't indulge in cruelty for the sake of increasing your prize money. Leads to professional dilemmas. Strangely silent, deadly explosions present another puzzle for our trio of high-tech investigators with bugs.